Hello, biology students. Let's talk about movement of molecules. Specifically, we're going to talk about mostly osmosis and diffusion. So before we jump into diffusion, let's define concentration. Concentration is the amount of stuff in an area. When there was a lot of stuff in this corner, that was a high concentration of that purple stuff. When it's spread around, that's a low concentration. Most molecules like to move until they reach an equilibrium. They like to be an equal amount everywhere. Pictures uh, spraying perfume in a corner of a room, just like this purple molecule, right? And that perfume over time will move throughout the whole entire room until it's equal everywhere, from being where it was a high concentration to where it was spread around everywhere. We call that movement that happens all by itself, doesn't require any energy, we call that diffusion, which is the movement of molecules from a high concentration to a low concentration until they reach equilibrium or equal amounts everywhere. So that's diffusion. This is what it could be for any molecules. It could be for perfume. It could be the smell of bacon. It does not matter. Okay? So here's another example of diffusion. Here we have someone dropping a little bit of red food dye in a cup of water. You know what's going to naturally happen. They are going to move from where there's a high concentration of the red food dye molecules to where over time they'll spread until they reach an equal amount everywhere and it'll look a little bit more pink throughout right well we call this difference initially from when there was a high amount to where there's a lower amount we call that a concentration gradient which is the overall difference between the two different areas so at the beginning of the process of diffusion there's usually a high concentration gradient where there's a large difference in the amount of concentration of the molecule high amount to where it is everywhere else so there's a large concentration gradient here maybe a medium concentration gradient here, but there's almost no concentration gradient when we have equilibrium, because guess what? Is there a difference in the amount of substance in the different areas? No, they're equal. So by the time we get to equilibrium, no more concentration gradient. Okay, so this one was a weird word. There's a couple of things that affect the amount or speed or rate of diffusion, and those are the size of the molecule. If the molecule gets really big, it's tough to move. Think about moving a big, big couch compared to moving a little um, piece of paper. Uh, temperature will change movement of things. If it's warm, things will move faster. If it's cold, things move slower. If things have weird charges, sometimes they don't like to move. If they are polar, sometimes that might affect the movement. And then Again, what's that concentration gradient? If it exists, it's going to be a faster movement, and towards the end, closer to equilibrium, movement kind of gets slower. All right, so we can look back at the picture we've seen before. I love this one, especially for size of molecules. The little ninja-looking stars actually were able to move through here, but guess what? These bigger molecules, they can't get through. They're too big. Okay, because they're too big, that leads us to actually a weird um, type of diffusion we'll talk about in a little bit. But before we talk about it, let's talk about a specific type of diffusion of a special type of molecule we'll look at a lot in class. And that is the molecule water. A lot of times we're going to try to guess the movement or direction of water. And osmosis is the movement of water through a semi-permeable membrane. So oftentimes we're curious, is water going to go into the permeable membrane or is it going to go out of the permeable membrane? And where do we know there's a semi-permeable membrane? in our cells, the cell membrane. So we're oftentimes wondering, is water gonna move into a cell or out of a cell? And we can actually use the idea of high concentration and low concentration to guess. Because this is just diffusion, water moves from where there's a high concentration of water, let's think that's the red dots, to where there's a low concentration of water. Okay, water is the, um, not the solute, here this is salt. So water will actually move to where there's more or a higher concentration of salt, the solute. Solute is like a solid in a solution. Okay, so water is actually moving this way. Great. Now, sometimes things, again, we said, can be too big, and that might affect the way they can move through the membrane. And so there's a special type of diffusion that is using the help of a transport or channel protein. This will help molecules that are either polar, too large, or they have charges. And we call this thing facilitated diffusion. Facilitated means to help. So if I was to facilitate an old lady moving across the street because she's too slow or is struggling, I am helping her move across the street. There you go, old lady, get across the street, right? So I'm helping her. 
This is similar to the transport protein or the channel protein that's smack in the middle of the cell membrane between the phospholipid bilayer. It is acting like a channel or a tunnel that will allow some of these oddball molecules to move through diffusion from a high concentration, lots of orange stuff, more concentrated, to where there's a low concentration. But unlike this purple stuff where it's regular diffusion, these purple things can move on their own. These orange things must, for some reason, need some help. And so this transport protein is being a helper or a facilitator. Okay, it's helping them move across. Same thing with these, these um, circles, right? They're moving across. So all facilitated diffusion is just diffusion, just with the helper, a transport protein. Very great. Okay, last but not least, we are going to be comparing the types of things we've learned today, facilitated diffusion, diffusion in general, and osmosis, which is just a diffusion of water. We're going to be comparing them to other types of transport in the cell. And there's two major categories of this transport. Let's talk about the one we've been talking about more, and that's passive transport. Okay, something that's passive does not require energy. So if you're being passive and your cells don't need to do that much work, all right, you don't need energy that much. And that's what this process is like. Did diffusion need energy to be able to move molecules like our perfume throughout the room? No. So what's our energy molecule in our cells that we would probably need if we did need energy? ATP. But because this is passive, it does not require ATP. No ATP required. And this is the stuff we've been talking about, like our perfume moving across the room. The perfume moves from the high concentration to the low concentration. Just like our water molecules will move to where there's more water to where there's less water. Okay, high to low. So this is osmosis and diffusion. We could also write facilitated diffusion, which is just another type of diffusion. All right. But what's really important to see is no matter what, this is always from a high concentration to a low concentration without the use of ATP or energy. Now, next class, after we practice osmosis diffusion and facilitated diffusion, we're going to learn about a other weird type of transport that actually, instead of not requiring ATP, it does require ATP. And because it requires ATP, which is energy, we call it active. Because if you need energy, you're very active. Okay? Instead of going from a high concentration to a low concentration, this oddball is going to go the opposite direction, from low to high. I like to picture this like your messy room. If your messy room has clothes spread everywhere evenly, think about it almost already at equilibrium, to bring them all to a higher concentration in your hamper or your dirty clothes pile, does it take energy to pick them all up where there's less and put them all in the same pile where there's now going to be more? Yeah, that takes energy. It's really hard to think about maybe how the perfume would go from spread across the room to back in the perfume pot, the perfume um, bottle. That would be really hard. And so that would require energy. And that's what it does in the class. So, uh, and then we'll learn about this more next class. Sorry. Um, so just to give you a little bit of a taste, right, this is going to be a tough process, but it is going from low to high. And what does it require? Because it's so hard to go from where there's less to where there's already a lot, right? It's the opposite direction. Picture it like instead of going down a slide, like at a playground, you're going from the bottom of the slide back up. That would require energy to climb up the slide. And that's why we call it active. Great job, guys. We'll practice all of these things in class. I'm very proud of you.